All right, up next is Timor Khan. He is a senior estimator at Walbridge. Timor is one of those unique estimating individuals. He likes to use bleeding edge technology. He's not afraid to jump in and, and give it a shot. So he has uh, benefited from that and we've benefited from his use of the technology. He provides us a lot of good feedback in terms of uh, what he would like to see as an estimator in terms of functionality and how the tool is used and we benefit as well um, because he pushes it till it breaks. <laughs> That's a good thing. He's a senior estimator at Walbridge and brings a, a vast wealth of knowledge to his presentation. Uh, from scheduling, project management, bid analysis, hard bids and beyond on a plethora of diverse projects, he's going to share a little bit of that with us in something he calls an estimator cocktail. Thank you. Please welcome Time War. All righty. Um, I hope everybody can hear me. Last year uh, I was here, I mean, not here in Phoenix too, so it's my second year in a row that I've been doing this presentation. Uh, Sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm like an undercover Beck agent, because wherever I go, I try to sell them D profiler, um, even though I don't get any commission for that. But <laughs> so one of these days I would expect a check from Stewart. Um, I have uh, been working for my current company uh, two, about two months, um, and I was working for a, a general contractor in Michigan City, Indiana, for almost two years before I. Uh, joined Walbridge. So I was again representing a different company. Uh, Walbridge uh, is in our top 40, uh, 40 uh, company. They're leading industrial manufacturing. Uh, they do about a 1.5 billion uh, volume uh, and most of the volume is uh, industrial and manufacturing. So they do a lot, lot of work for Ford, Chrysler, GM and uh, we also have uh, offices uh, in multiple locations also. We work in Mexico and Brazil. So before coming to Walbridge, I was, uh, just, as I said, I was working for a, a contractor in uh, Michigan City, Indiana, which was owned by a healthcare organization. So most of our projects were healthcare, so I got pretty good exposure to healthcare. And that company would do about close to 200 million a year. I was their lead estimator, um, and the way their uh, model was set up was basically I was more responsible for conceptual estimates and budgeting and program estimating. And then once it gets to the uh, DD level, then it basically the project manager on the job, he will uh, take the estimate and take it to the next level. So I was, uh, in the beginning when I started using D-Profiler there, my president of the company, he never uh, heard of D-Profiler, so he was hesitant, but then, you know, I got him comfortable and we started using D-Profiler on almost every project that I did budget. And he realized that he was getting rave, raving uh, responses and comments from his bosses uh, that were basically um, approving all these budgets because they were feeling more comfortable with the numbers that we were presenting. So the communication improved a lot because of the visuals uh, that we would present along with the numbers. When I came to Walbridge, it's a bigger organization. So basically I am dealing with now a bigger group of estimators. It's not just me and two, three other people, but it's like 60 estimators. And these 60 estimators, they have an MEP group, they have some specialized group that who only work in industrial projects, some uh, work in commercial projects. So for me it was like, okay, I will be just an estimator in there. Uh, but then I realized there was a lot for me to offer in this group because they were very much behind as far as technology implementation in uh, pre-con and estimating. They are very uh, good in technology when it comes to BIM coordination or uh, other technology stuff, but not in the estimating. They still use uh, Excel spreadsheets for estimating. And 
Uh, they bought on-screen takeoff program maybe four years ago. So for a $1.5 billion company, you will be thinking that, oh, how is that possible? And what I could do, and, uh, when I did an, uh, my analysis that why are they so behind? And the reason is when you have a bigger group, it's hard to implement any new uh, application or anything technology-wise. Because there's so many uh, hurdles. You have a group that doesn't like technology. There's a group that likes technology, but they're not good with estimating. So you have to create a blend. So that's why uh, today my topic was more focused on when you deal with such type of situation, how do you mix all these together? So let me start with knowledge. The first piece uh, I call knowledge is because this is where it starts. You go to school, you get a degree. So basically, the basic education you learn in your classroom about construction and all these trades and everything. So that's where uh, you're, you start. And you know, sometime you find an internship, so that improve your knowledge and some mentoring from somebody or site visits through your school or while you're doing internships. And that's where you develop some skills. But those skills, when I'm talking about skills, I would talk maybe a lot of these uh, kids in their um, s uh, programs, they learn uh, 3D modeling tools or how do you estimate or they use some applications for estimating, for scheduling. So that's how where they start their basic skills. But these skills never get polished till they actually start their job and they use it on the real projects. So in my group, there's um, most of the people are very knowledgeable, of course. I'm the least knowledgeable person in that group. And they have 20 to 30 years experience in construction and estimating. So I always look at them as institute where I can actually go and learn about the real construction. Now, these people are used to do things old-fashioned way. So they like to do use their scales, the drawings, and spreadsheets, and they don't like technology. They just try to shy away from technology. I was surprised when, actually, I saw uh, recently I was working on a project, and I was the lead on that, and I had to give uh, one piece uh, to one of the senior estimators and he was uh, so I went to him and I said where's your takeoff and he showed me a spreadsheet so I said you didn't do an on-screen takeoff he said what is that I said well <laughs> uh, we were supposed to take off things on the on-screen takeoff he said no I don't, I don't believe in that I said okay I know you don't believe in that but when I'm going to present it to the owner if he asks me a question how I'm gonna show all about these quantities because on my uh, piece, actually, I, had, I was uh, uh, lucky that I got a 3D model from the architect. And we didn't have too much time to uh, prepare that detail estimate. So I was able to extract quantities from the 3D model. And also, I used uh, uh, 2D uh, takeoff tool to get all the rest of the quantities. And then um, I did not have any estimating software, just as I said that they are using estimating uh, for, uh, sorry. Excel spreadsheets for estimating. So I did use that. And then I found out that the version that I was using was the latest and greatest. And one of the senior estimator, he had his own version of that spreadsheet. And my vice president was not happy that why did he use that. So I had to take his estimate and actually transfer it to the newer version. So it took me like four or five hours. But again, I was the lead, so I had to do it, and I had to present it to the uh, owner, so I couldn't just start fighting with, oh, why didn't you do it this way, or why didn't you do it this way? <coughs> so, but being that said, these people know construction inside out, and they have done estimates for 20, 30 years, so they know everything more than you, so you cannot go to them and tell them, oh, well, why did you do it this way? So you gotta give them respect. Um, and you have to see how you can take their knowledge and use it in future too. Technology, of course, uh, when we talk about technology, I have seen technology evolved in 
last 10 years since I started working in the industry and I remember when I started doing takeoffs I used to use the scales and I would highlight the drawings with markers and see okay well this wall I have taken off or this floor I have taken off and then those uh, those roller scales thing whatever you call it and I was like so sur I was like so happy I said this makes your life easier and then when I saw the digitizer I was even more excited I said oh that's even much better and on-screen takeoff actually changed a lot for uh, as far as when it, you do the, the way you do estimates. Um, but then, you know, there's so many things down the road that came in, and I was introduced to the profiler. I was exposed to uh, Autodesk products. So, how do you integrate the knowledge? the experience and technology. Now, at Walbridge, I'm dealing with a group, as I mentioned, that is, has a 20 years, a 20 years plus experience. Then I deal with a group that has 10 years to 20 years experience, that's a mid-level. And then I'm seeing the newer generation that is fresh graduates or have maybe four or five years experience. So. I see what is the difference and how you bring these groups together to, so that the output can be great. The young guys are good with technology, but they don't have construction experience. The 20 years plus people are good with construction, but they don't have technology experience. And the mid-level are having a little bit of estimating experience and a little bit of technology experience. So basically they are the best in position to basically bring, and bring everything together. So when I started working at Walbridge and um, I talked to them about the technology piece, so they looked at me and said, ah, that's a good idea and you're gonna do it. Because whenever you present your idea, you gotta be prepared that probably they will tell you, oh, oh why don't you do it? So I am the one who have to do it. So I had to come up with a plan that how I'm going to implement it and without offending anybody. So what are the main challenges that we all face in the estimating world? First of all, it's efficiency because we have to always come up with a lot of information in short time and then everybody expect that that information has to be dead accurate. Because no matter what do you do, how great information you produce, if anything goes wrong, then they always blame you because you are the one who told them that this is how much it's going to cost. Um, you have to be consistent every time you present any information. So just like as I said that everybody was using their own versions of Excel spreadsheets, you have to make sure that everything is more standardized so everybody is using the same information. Data organization, um, if you set up your estimates in a CSI level, let's say in Excel spreadsheets, and when you're presenting that information to the owner and suddenly he asks you, okay, so how much my skin, building skin cost? Well, then you have to go in, into every CSI division and pick up all the pieces, add them together to give him that answer, but it would be easier if you could just quickly just uh, change that to uniformat that will give you that information so data organization is the key uh, communication with clients I have noticed all throughout my 10 years experience that there are professionals who are great at what they do but when it comes to present that information in front of the client they just totally get silent they just don't like talking so you have to see how you can build up that uh, too. So communication is the key, of course. Visualization makes, it, makes the communication easier because then you don't have to say too many words. The picture tells everything. And collaboration. Verification of information. When you are uh, using an Excel estimate, you have to go through line by line items, make sure that, well, you got covered everything and also if it's, everything is adding up correctly. So now, having all these uh, challenges, how do you streamline the process? First of all, they, you have to choose a team leader who will implement it. 
and then you need to <coughs> know and talk to your group that what are exactly their needs are. Um, you know, some people say, well, maybe we need something, a good solution for napkin sketch level, or maybe we need a good solution for a hard, a hard bid level or bid day level, or how do we do, this, do the CM uh, estimates. So everybody has different needs, so you need to understand what exactly everybody wants. Then you evaluate the options. Okay, well, I can, can I use on-screen takeoff coupled with an estimating software? Uh, is Winest uh, a good option or Timberline a good option or MC Square a good option? So you evaluate your options and also nowadays you know you have other tools too for extracting data from uh, 3D models with Assemble or uh, Navisworks. Then what is your company approach for all these delivery systems? You need to understand that that's how you can really uh, program your approach. <coughs> what are the resources that you have available? Who will help you in, in that implementation? Because it's not only you. I mean, you still need some other people that can help you. And then, of course, you come up with an implementation plan. You set up your teams. And then you set your uh, you know, task. OK, well, these two, three people will initially start with learning something new. And then they, how they're going to start uh, transferring this knowledge to other people. So basically, you start with three, four people, then you grow that hub to maybe six, seven people, and that's how you grow. It's never a good idea to have 50, 60 people sit in a training room, learn a software, and then ex expect that they will be implementing that. It's not going to happen. Everybody takes uh, or have a different aptitude of the, or absorbing the information. They have a different level. So you always start with people who are really passionate about learning new stuff, and then you kind of increase that horizon. So well, I've been using uh, D-Profiler for almost last four or five years. Um, and when I saw the, the data manager uh, got released, and I played with it, and it did solve a lot of my uh, problems with data organization in the background. So I was thinking how these three products can help me achieve my goal for that cocktail that I'm trying to build up. So Profiler, if you see, there's the modeling part of it. So the newer generation of estimators would be pretty excited by doing the 3D modeling. But only your experienced people can help generating that information in the data manager that these younger folks can attach to the model. And by this process, they will be also learning how to actually build estimates. Um, I was uh, offered by my vice president that when you start developing this, I will give you a couple interns or new graduates to start developing the, the database. And I was very happy because I thought, this is a very good point for these younger uh, engineers or estimators to start learning about estimates. Because when you let them start putting, uh, collecting the data and putting that in their data manager in uniform format, CSI format, or master format, they would understand actually that's the basic where how the data is basically organized and how what's the the flow of the data. So whenever they start building the model and then they start integrating those line items uh, for generating the estimate, they will really understand what's going on. Same thing with the estimator. Um, it's the, the front end application. Uh, you have to make sure that whenever you bring something new, it has to be very user friendly. Because no matter how, uh, how good you are with the technology, but you are implementing technology in a bigger group, you have to understand that not everybody is at the same level. So you have to come up with a solution that is more easier to implement. Uh, when I opened Estimator uh, for the first time, it gave me very um, nicer and user-friendly look compared to when I was using Winest or MC Square or Timberline, which in, in, in which I was always overwhelmed with the menu. So for something easier, I had to go find 
maybe go through like tons of uh, menus to just do a little thing. But when I looked at the interface of Estimator, I was very happy that it's not overwhelming and it's just right to the point and it's very easy to use. Um, and that's why I, I proposed to my group that I believe Estimator could be a good solution, specifically when you have not used any estimating software before and you are going from spreadsheet to uh, an estimating uh, software. I believe it gives you a flavor of uh, uh, the spreadsheet to you where you can really uh, write down your formulas, you can create your logic, and it's, it's great for communication. Um, so this is one of my challenges uh, in the future that I have to kind of incorporate all these three together and with this, uh, with this group. Um, I'm excited and uh, I hope I would be able to uh, implement this uh, nicely. So I think I finished my 20 minutes. So any questions? Any questions for Tom Moore? No questions. <laughs> I do. Okay. Yes, I can do this. Yes. All right. Yeah, I've got a couple of questions for you, Time War. Um, between both you and Craig, I, I, and working with you guys on the phone and over the web, I've noticed that you both are not afraid to take the model into a meeting with a customer. Is that, is that fair to say? Um, Beyond the model, what other techniques have you used to get data out of Profiler and present it to the customer? I noticed you had some slides with some images. Do you, do you, do you take data out and present it to the customer outside of the model? I mean, other than the estimate itself. You want, can you say something to that? So here's uh, what I had um, some of the situations. It depends on the situation. If, if your client can meet you uh, like in a conference room or a meeting room where you have a bigger screen, it's always good to pull up the D profiler model and actually talk about everything live. Now there's, there's some situations where you have to send out some deliverables. And I, what I always did was I would, I would take some screenshots and I would, I would uh, use some um, uh, tools in PowerPoint to actually highlight the overall scope. Um, and I was thinking about creating uh, this new thing which I call it facts and figures. Um, so you can really v present your whole scope vis visually with all those screenshots with you know highlighting all the information okay well this is you know that many square feet of building that many square of uh, that much square foot of skin and that much percentage of glazing on it, um, then you can talk about you know what are the big line items for site. If you how much how big is your parking lot? How many parking spaces you're accommodating? Um, how many square feet of sidewalk? So a bigger picture. Then you go to another level where you can create okay uniform at level cost breakdown or a CSI level cost breakdown, and then also I would have a, uh, my scope sheet where I would have a detailed scope. So that I have used uh, on one of the healthcare projects where we had to sit with the uh, architect after the budget got approved and I basically sent all my information to the, uh, the architect. So he had all my unit prices, all my detail estimate, and also my scope. Uh, so what I have used for flooring, uh, what I have used for, uh, what are my different assumptions um, for, you know, uh, for wall finishes or ceiling finishes. So it helps, uh, just like Craig mentioned, that it helps the architect understand too what, what you have assumed right. so they don't sway away from that right. Um, right. and it stays, stay at uh, target. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a leading question, but you answered exactly. It's a, just that you're, like you're using the tools as a cocktail to mm -hmm. get to the deliverable. I think it's important to use a cocktail of the tools to present the information back to the customer. Um, in our profession, we're so used to just sliding an estimate across the table, saying, here you go. And if you can, if you can mix in some of the images from your model, it, the, the presentation becomes more rich and the conversation becomes more rich in content. So that's, that's where I was going with that. I had one more point on your presentation I wanted to highlight. You mentioned that there's this challenge in working with a team that has a, a one to five year 
experienced estimator and a 20 to 30 year experienced estimator. And I know from my personal experience, I was going to ask you to speak to this for just a second. You know, there is a sweet spot where you can team up that one to five year with a 20 to 30. And I know from my own self, that was where I experienced the most growth in terms of knowledge and, and, and absorbing information pertinent to our profession when I was teamed up with a 30 year guy. And I was, I was using the tool underneath him, under his wing, and I was just absorbed, I was just like a sponge, you know, because it puts you in that position, right? Mm -hmm. I agree with you. And again, uh, just like as I talked about one of my uh, senior estimator that I, uh, he was helping me, helping me with one of the uh, projects that I was leading on and he was doing estimate. So he, uh, when he finished the estimate and I looked at his estimate, so I went to him and I said, you didn't do the use the on-screen takeoff and everything. So he said, I don't like that stuff. So I said, okay, I give you, I, I make a deal with you. I will teach you everything that you like technology-wise and I will help you in that, but you gotta teach me how to build these things. So, uh, so he said, okay, that, I like that deal. So you have to have that coordination, collaboration in order to actually really uh, create a successful team. You cannot say, okay, well, I know everything. So uh, you have to have that approach that everybody knows something more than you, so you, how you can capture that knowledge. Yeah, so, great, yeah. great. All right. Yep. Oh, we got a question in the back. So Brent, you just talked about uh, mentoring the, the young estimator and the senior guy. I don't make great point. He said, don't, don't train 50 people, send them back to their desk, and wish them luck. So can, since Doug and you were both in, in the front of the room, could you in just a minute describe what your philosophy for, for training a, a new a new company on profile or estimator. You want to give it a shot first? Sure. I think what we've it's on. It's on. I think what we've seen uh, that's real successful is that you do have a a young group. This could be two or three people that uh, uh, really enjoy the technology. Of course, they they don't know what they don't know yet. And so when you pair them with, uh, with a seasoned uh, veteran in the industry that could be an estimator, could be you know, somebody from the architecture side, you're, you're gonna create this, this um, dependency upon each, which is what uh, Ty Moore was just saying, is that there's a negotiation between the, the young person saying, I don't know uh, what you can teach me. And of course, the, the seasoned veteran is also uh, suggesting that they may not want to touch the technology, they may not want to, uh, to immerse themselves in it, but they do want to pass on that knowledge. They want to, they want to uh, hand it off to other people. So, I think we uh, we would encourage that uh, as uh, uh, small work groups work very well together. You incubate that and then uh, pass that on to the next team. So the team is always paired young to to seasoned veteran at the same time. I wouldn't add anything to that. That's that's exactly what I would suggest. So, all right. Well, thank you very much, Tom. Yes, a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you.